Hello, and thank you for being here with us as 16 Ounce Cinema presents Takeshi Mieke with myself, Mike, and Bjork. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Today we're doing two films yes. for the price of one, which is still free. <laughs> That's sad, sadly still free. It'll be a very divisive um, episode. Very divisive. We've watched both one of the best and one of the worst me case i can agree disagree vehemently, <laughs> vehemently about which is which which is crazy yep um first one's andromedia which is the good one you wanna you wanna you, let's just roll right into the films man uh, fuck, fuck our lives we, we, we'll, we'll be going through some of these me case pretty quickly we'll talk about our lives later yeah i have a story you, for later anyway <laughs> a work there story. you go Fuck it, let's just go to the movies. What are we watching first? First watching Andromedia. It's fantastic. It's uh, a made-for-TV film that Mika did. It's a piece of shit, and it made me wish cinema never was. Why didn't you like it? I don't know what's wrong with it. It was droll. It was (laughs) boring. It wasn't shot well. It was shot very well. I mean, I... It was shot very poorly. It was just everything bored the shit out of me. It sounds me. like you're describing uh, Blues Harp. <laughs> there was a, it, there was like 15 minutes there where uh, my roommates came home from vacation. And I just went to go talk to them without turning the movie off. It was oh just like let God. it play. I just, I just could. I just, it, I gave it half a star on Letterbox. I think it's just poor all around. I was absorbed while watching this. I was so immersed. I was just so damn into it. And I originally rated it a 7 when I first watched it, but it's gone up to an 8 out of 10 now. It's fantastic. That's crazy. See, maybe for, like, me, like, I lived through 97, 98, 99, where all these kind of weird... I lived through 98 and 99. Like, 3D gra- Yeah, but you were 3. You <laughs> yeah, little baby. <laughs> or, or all these little graphics were like this. Yeah, I love that. And they weren't mind-blowing at the time, either. They were shit at the time. I think it was great. Worse now. Yeah, because, like, it's bad. You like bad things. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I think it's bad, but also kind of good in its own way. Like, it looks really yeah, stupid and fake, but I think that makes it look good. Yeah. I don't know. See, that's the thing. Like, I, I like... You know how people say, like, oh, the 90s were the best music. Music now sucks. I can and agree. And those people just, like, well, they, okay, but that's just because they never lived through that era, and, and they don't, or, or at least they don't remember all the bad music that they used to listen to or was on the radio and stuff like that. Like grunge? Whereas, <laughs> fuck you, grunge was amazing. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, in the grunge genre, there was, like, two or three dozen great bands, and then the rest was shit. Just like, just like there is now for all these kind of bands. Oh, am I recording? Oh, I am recording. All right, perfect. Oh, good. Uh, you only know Nirvana? Yeah, that's the only grunge band I know. What about the greatest grunge band of all time, Pearl Jam? I didn't know they were from the nineties. I thought they were like a seventies band. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, you offended me. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, I thought they were really. They've old. been my favorite band since I was eight. <laughs> so that's like thirty years. Oh damn. <laughs> Except, well, I always go back and forth between them and Iron Maiden, so... Iron Maiden's not grunge, though. No, no, they were from way back when. Yeah, I thought so. I was getting paranoid, though, thinking Iron Maiden was from the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> That's strange. So, so uh, let's get started. Oh, they, my subs didn't work properly for, oh, like, the yeah. first ten minutes. Anyway, it wouldn't sync for some reason. They just wouldn't sync at all I should have sent you the one the I had. I had two different sub files, and they both synced really well. Oh, you sent the shitty one to me? Thanks. Yeah, you already um, have the film, so I just sent you some random subtitle off a random website. But, um... Yeah, I just ended up streaming it from, like, from a website called Drama Cool! Oh, damn. And that was fine. I yeah. think I've been on there before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they got some, like, weird Asian melodrama stuff. And that's what this is, weird uh-huh. Asian melodrama. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I, I thought you'd like it as soon as it started because it starts out with a random naked girl on a table, which is so weird. Yeah, that's cool. Recalling it all. Yeah, she's getting all electrified and shit. Yeah, it's awesome, and the memories that she's recalling are all pixelated and super hazy, just like how actual memories are when you recall them. Not pixelated, but very hazy and. Not that's, everything's uh, in true. hyper detail or in focus. I'm pretty popular with girls. <laughs> is that what you he remember? says? <laughs> That's what he says when she gives him a gift or something like oh, that yeah. for Valentine's Day or something. That guy is so uh, strange. You ever you ever listen to that song uh, by Nada Surf called Popular? I don't even know what that is. Oh man, it's hilarious. It's like this like 
It's not a comedy act. They're a real band. Mm. But the song Popular is just like how to be popular in high school. How do you be popular and in like, high school? I don't. I, I didn't watch the video to prep. Mm. Um, but you know, you got to brush your teeth and 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 cut and uh, uh, comb your hair and stuff like. You got to listen to the song. Basic it's fucking stuff. great. <laughs> I, I'm gonna no. I'm gonna link it to you. It's just, it's hilarious. Ah, nice. And like him saying that made me made me think of it. We'll give it a watch after we wrap this podcast. Yes. In two hours. Yeah, oh God, this is gonna. I've got so much to talk about with Andromedia. It's gonna be like four hours, maybe. <laughs> no, or no. Okay. <laughs> so what we're seeing is the girl's final memory, and um, the girl is at the beach riding on the back of the guy's bike, and she's talking about which I was never cool enough to do. Yeah, I've always thought it was dangerous, so I never bothered doing I, it. I always had one friend with pegs. Obviously, I could never be in the back because I was always bigger than everyone else, like yeah, tall. Yeah, you end up giving the bike um, a wheelie. Yeah, so so that never happened for me, and and I never had anyone on my back of my. I never had pegs on my bicycle, so. Yeah, I I never liked bicycles because they always used to make my ass sore, so I just never bothered riding them. Well, it stops after a day or two. Oh, I, I didn't ride my bike that often. That's probably why it just made my ass sore whenever I rode it. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, you can buy different kinds of uh. I guess when you're a kid, you just use whatever. But like, yeah, I an adult, those I bought crappy generic bikes. These that's got the super pointy end on it. Yeah. Well, no. I got. You can always um. You can upgrade any sort of bike. So I, I got like a nice big fat seat on mine. Do they sell cushions for have... bikes? Like that should be. Well, a you thing. know, like the 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 bike seats are cushioned, like with gel and shit. It's awesome. Oh. It's actually super comfortable. We're living in the future. I didn't know this was a thing. Whenever, like, still, like every every like, I probably did some damage because like, <laughs> you know, I didn't own a I, I didn't own a car for so fucking long, and like my I, I go like when I used to go an hour at a time to get to work, like my balls would occasionally be super numb. I bet on a professional so, like, bike can't... riders get hemorrhoids this way. Really? Yeah, because well, they also like when you like just have your ass on something hard constantly. Yeah. Like if you just don't have a chair and you sit on the ground, you'll eventually get hemorrhoids if you keep doing that. Well, yeah, yeah. probably. I mean, cream. Plus, they I mean they stress a lot, so it's just like when you're stressed that that leads to hemorrhoids, all that kind of stuff. Oh, does so. it? <laughs> yeah. well, well, I mean, stress like yeah, f- f- physically stressed. Oh right, so. I thought you meant like mental yeah. stress. For some reason, all the stress yeah. I had has just gone into my back, and it's awful. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I've got. Rid you of it have cash, now. bro. Go see a, Go see a, Go see a masseuse. I don't think we have any chiropractors around here. No, no. I said a masseuse, not a quack. They're the same thing, aren't they? One of them like snaps you, and the other one just rubs you. It's not much different. Hang on. What's your? What's your? Where do you live? Fucking old Yorkshire. Yeah, somewhere in Yorkshire. <laughs> oh, Yorkshire, not not old Yorkshire. Okay. Old yo- ye old Yorkshire. The old York, Yorkshire, uh, how do you, I don't know how to spell masseuses. <laughs> uh, it's just called massage parlors, isn't it? I don't think anyone uses masseuse. It's gotta be somewhere. There's like a million. I've or, never why, seen why you have any? anywhere. I don't think it's really a big thing over here. Are you, are you close to Leeds? Not really. That's like f- two or three hours away. Oof. Yeah, okay. What about Barnsley or Dewsbury? Barnsley's like maybe an hour away. There you go. They have one called Flair. A lot of good reviews. It's got a great name. I'd go to somewhere called Flair. Well, I think Barnsley's kind of a shithole, so I, I don't know if I trust it. Yeah, but I, I've seen I've seen your town. That's kind of a shithole too. I mean, the entire country's a shithole. We just have some shitholes that are slightly nicer than other shitholes, and Barnsley's not a uh, nicer shithole. Uh, well, I'll I'll save this for later. We'll we'll get back to that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get we'll get you a massage. You'll love it. I hope so. <laughs> so uh, the girl's talking with a guy on his bike about how they'll soon be old and nothing will change and she jumps off the back of the bike and I thought she was going to pull up her skirt because of how the shot was framed really great cinematography mm-hmm. by the way that Mike hates for some reason <laughs> and she ended up doing one of those gun finger things and pointing at him and saying back at Hell yeah. I always do that to my dog I always like pretend to shoot him with gun fingers and he just hops around it's so cute <laughs> I like gun fingers. Yeah, they're fun. So I wrote everyone is sad or something because it seemed like everyone was sad. Oh yeah, there's like a girl that's sad about because they go to the cafe and uh, it's those two girls cafe. having orange juice at the cafe, and um, yeah, one of them gets sad because the boy came and I think she's shy about being around boys or something because oh no mm. one told me this boy was coming. Uh, I think her name's Rika, so they she like just wandered off. 
Okay. Yeah, I know. I know not Dude, what's with, like, what's with ja- Japanese beaches are so cool and there's I no know, one around right? them. It's lovely. Like, I've talked about this our before, beaches, but British beaches are awful and covered in oil. Yeah, our beaches are great and they're always packed and I hate it because I like being alone. So I always have to walk 20 minutes north or south to be alone. Yeah, but, I uh, Florida beaches being really nice. Proper sandy. Mm, proper sandy, yes. Yeah. Unlike British beaches, they're just covered in stones the... and pebbles. <laughs> it's crap. Yeah. Well, you're in an island up there in the north, so it makes sense. That does make sense. I remember... We're in the tropics, basically. I remember when we, like, me and my sister and our, well, I just should just say family. Our family went to uh, a beach somewhere, I think it was Filey, and we got a bunch of starfish and we put them in a plastic bag and we brought them home and stuck them in a drawer in the kitchen and we forgot they were there for like two years. Then, like, two years later, there was this awful, rancid smell in the kitchen and no one knew where it was coming from. And eventually, I think my dad opened the kitchen drawer that the starfish was in and the smell just blew out and it almost made everyone throw up. It was so bad. We used to have, like, rotting starfish in the drawer. It was gross. That's the worst story I've ever heard, I'll be honest. It's, it's <laughs> has so many layers. First of all, you killed a bunch of poor starfish. Yeah, they were alive when we even... had them, but when they were in the drawer and they came out two years later, they were rock hard and dead. I, I, I didn't know, like, starfish lived up north. Yeah, we get them in the uh, beaches sometimes, so you just don't see them too often. It's crazy that they didn't smell for two years. It's because the drawer think, was, like, like, airtight shut, but it managed to eventually punch uh... through it. Why? Why didn't you use that drawer ever? Like what? Because it, it was just full of random crap. We didn't know where to put anywhere else. It was like full uh, of old cards and stuff. That's crazy. Yeah. What a crazy story. It, we just took out the sandy bag of dead starf- starfish and threw them out, <laughs> but the smell remained. It was awful. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I'm not sure how we got it out, but it was right below the fish tank, and I think the fish died shortly after, maybe from the smell. Starfish give me the creeps because if you just like cut off one of their arms, they'll just make another. Yeah, starfish. they're like the lizards of the sea, the dope. I like yeah. them. Well, yeah, they're, they're even worse because like you can't chop a lizard in half; it'll just die. Yeah, true. You can only you can chop yeah, it off just... and it'll grow back. Yeah, I like them. I think they're really fun to like squeeze. Not squeeze to the point of death, but like spongy <laughs> squeeze. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't squeeze the starfish to death. I'm just making that clear. <laughs> Well, it'd probably have been better if you had. <laughs> yeah, they probably died a very slow and miserable death in a dark. I, I remember our, our our first gold when we got our first goldfish here, which is a, you know a freshwater animal. Yeah. We went to the oh, beach and got a bunch of, of um, fucking people that puts it in the salt water. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, we no. Well, we put the we put the seashells in there, and oh. then it like immediately died. <laughs> I wonder why our fish is dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, me and my dad. It was a very like Pollock moment. We both looked at it like, yeah, you think it was all the salt? <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can understand. Dude, how is that though. cherry tree still alive on the fucking beach? I know, right? I'm thinking they planted it there just for the film. I think it looks beautiful, though. It was very beautiful, it but me of like... one from uh, Young Fug's Innocent Blood. I think it's supposed to symbolize youth and the passage of time. Something like that. Oh. Yeah, it's it. Andromedia's deep. Just as deep as the other Oh, thing. okay. Apparently, beach trees are th- thrive on the beaches. Uh, or, uh... Cherry trees. That's awesome. I want to go visit a That's... Japanese cherry tree. Maybe there's some starfish yeah, underneath. <laughs> I hate flying, though. I wish I could just walk to Japan. Yeah, I can't stand flying. It makes me want to f- pass out. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... If I, well, next time I fly, I'm going to get drugs. I can't I can't fly if I drugs. What Mr. T does, he drinks that milk and he gets knocked out. <laughs> that would be perfect. Yeah, it's great. So the the Wakongs, the amazing looking cherry blossom beach, and they reminisce about their friendship that they had as children. You see flashbacks of them playing, frolicking on the beach as children under the same cherry tree. And the girl asks if the guy is in the mood, and it makes him all pissy. Like, the mood basically, when you think that, you mean, oh, you want to have sex. But no, it's just like a peck on the cheek. And it's, it's oh, all yeah. very tame. It's really tame teen romance stuff. So not like I don't know. She seemed stuff. pretty thirsty for this dude. <laughs> He's not into her at all. Yeah, I think he only likes girls if they're trapped inside a computer. That seems to be his niche. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, everyone's got something. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, he really falls for her when she's becoming a computer. So. Yeah, it's like that guy in Japan that married his Nintendo DS avatar. <laughs> he reminded me of him. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> and, uh... It is now night time, and the guy is saying goodbye to mine. He's like, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And he keeps saying goodbye because he's a little freak. And the guy rings uh, 
brings my just like two seconds after she leaves i'm assuming to say goodbye again because he's it's so strange and it, this stops my dead in the middle of the road and she immediately gets hit by a truck and killed <laughs> dude she gets fucking wrecked yeah, the guy it made me it made, me it made me do the it, it made I, I was laying in the my bed watching the movie and i did like the retard arms where i like <laughs> like a like a t-rex i was like oh boy oh my god i just got an amazing <laughs> visual of that <laughs> yeah it was very spooky that's awesome well done. <laughs> and we see the guy who's Mai's dad working on a computer, and he has a really strange CGI heart floating in the middle of his black computer screen, and it looks like a blinding <laughs> yeah. light. These people really don't understand how computers work, but it's cool. And uh, we in- no, nobody did in the late nineties. So I know that's fine. what makes it so great. It's like hack the film Hackers. If you've seen that, it's just such a nonsense, yeah, and it's fantastic. I love it. Mm-hmm. And we're now sucked inside the computer matrix where Maya is recreated as a CGI avatar. I am AI spelled A. <laughs> I. You hear that like 10 times throughout the film. It's great. Never gets old. And that was literally a spot on impression. That was so good. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a computer anime girl. You are. That's fantastic. And we are now in Canada. And there's a doctor who's telling a Japanese guy that he has an inoperable brain tumor. And the Japanese guy says in English, like, how long do I have to live? And the doctor <laughs> says nothing and just stares at him. Wait, how do you know you're in Canada? They're in Canada. They said Canada at the bottom of the oh. screen in Little Matrix. Lines. Oh, mine did not, so okay. Oh, strange. <laughs> Maybe it was my subtitles that said it, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. So Mai has an email friend, and the email friend goes to visit Mai's father, who... Recreate okay, him. don't fucking, don't fucking go along with that. There's no such thing as email friend. It's like I fucking started pals. dying. I know what it is, but I was just like, what are they calling him? An email friend. It's almost too perfect, like what an old man would, would say or <laughs> well, something like that. Well, this one was probably you know, written it's... by old people because of the technology. Right, the right. That's sense. like, it was crazy, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think it, like email friends were probably a thing in Japan, but I'm not too sure. I like you it, know what man. I wish we had? I, I wish, like, American movies had random Japanese talk. <laughs> like, like, they'd have random English. I think that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be cool, because so many Japanese films, they just have random English nonsense in them. I know. It's all, they always speak it, like, at 50% speed. They do. It's crazy. They're, the, like, um, speak, they have no idea what they're actually saying. They're just being fed random words. It's great. So, uh, yeah, the email girl somehow finds a way to the funeral. I'm not sure how she heard that Mai died, but she's there. And Mai's um, told her dad about the boy she was seeing. She's like, oh, yeah, we spent so much time together. We're always under their cherry tree on the beach, telling him that kind of stuff. And the... You know what? Some, so I think his, her dad or her herself said she's a perfect AI copy. And I don't think that's true. I think I, I think she's pretty shitty. Uh, I She's guess. having some problems. Yeah, it's because I don't know why, but he burnt all the memory discs. He just like burnt them for no reason. I think I thought he only <laughs> uploaded like one disc and there was free. Yeah. Uh, I think the dad wants to uh, this keep is, her the slave. This is this is where Bjork calls my mom a homeless retard Negro. Could you, could you tell <laughs> what us? The hell? Could you tell us why you did that, Bjork? No. Shut up, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking questions, you know. I did not say uh, those I, words, by the way. Um. Mike's. Oh, you only you only wrote them out with your fingers. I did not write them out. I you said something about that, and I replied and said, "Didn't realize your mum was back in town." <laughs> <laughs> ah, so he's just doing it for laughs, the little rascal. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe you remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it down immediately. Yeah, I forgot about that until now. <laughs> no, so this is gonna Papa be great. Caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all ready, please. <laughs> Um, oh, the dad it. tells the boyfriend to remember Mai forever, and the man with the tumor goes to visit Mai's father. And we don't know this yet, but he's Mai's estranged brother and the estranged son to the computer dad. Mm-hmm. And the, so the dad basically made a program which can record people's minds and play them out like videotapes, is what he says. But that's not what it is. Which is like when wonder is. The end of time. Right, or you keep whatever, bringing this film up second... every single uh, which, podcast. Well, I'm just, that's exactly the plot of that film. That's crazy. Oh my god. So we, we men, when does did like his own Andrew Media film? That's awesome. That sounds great. Yeah, if, if I bring it up again next week, we're, we're just going to have to watch that movie together. Yeah, we'll just do like a random one off Wim Wenders podcast for it. 
we'll, Dude, we'll need ho- new artwork happy. and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Tikiche Mieke presents when when there's God. the time of the world. I can't. I can never remember. The, the remember one the podcast fucking name of the that movie. no one will ever see because no one would ever think to search <laughs> something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so he made the program because he wanted to do so with the guy to see his mother what he's doing with Mai, but he didn't. I don't know why. So that guy's mum's yeah. memory's gone forever, basically. And uh, Rika, who's my friend, tells the boyfriend that she misses Mai. And she starts crying, gets all sad. And the father is talking to the computer AI, and he has Mai's memory stored on a disc, which he inserts into the disc drive. And the AI is then given Mai's memories, but she keeps making it very clear that she isn't Mai, and she wants to be her own individual AI. And I don't know mm-hmm. why. It's weird because she basically is her in physical appearance, and she has all the memories. It's literally the same person. And um. I calls recalls a memory of being sprayed with water, and for some reason this makes her avatar become more human. Maybe because she's like, "Oh, <laughs> I remember what water feels like on my real skin," so it like refreshed her avatar, something like that. Strange. And um, there's a man in the car, and I don't know his name, so I just keep referring to him as "man in the car" throughout the entire notes. And um, he's listening in on the AI conversation reports um, back about the memory being copied. And you'll get a kick out of this, Mike, if you didn't already know. But we're now introduced to the film's villain, who is played by none other than Christopher Doyle, if you know who that is. Christopher Doyle, no. He is Wong Kar Wai's cinematographer. Huh. Yep. I don't know why he's in this random tape made for TV movie teen romance film directed by Takashi Miike, but he is. <laughs> And he's really good at it. It's just strange to see him pop up. And he didn't even do the cinematography for this film, but it's still really good. I wonder if he gave like, the guy notes or critiques on his own cinematography. It would be strange if he did. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if... I, I'm just trying to rack my brain about how he came into this, but I really can't think, because Takashi Mika and Wong Kar Wai obviously don't know each other. And I don't think... I mean, obviously they do. I don't I don't know if they do. Well, he was in his movie. Well, the cinematographer was, but I don't know. It's weird. Oh, the, oh I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's strange. I don't know. Maybe he just liked his films or something. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. And uh, Christopher Doyle's working on making his own AI sentient, and it looks horrifically bad. Oh, I, I called all the bad guys spooky dudes. I don't, yeah, spooky I don't know why. Doyle and his spooky the spooky, the spooky dudes AI. wanted wanted the AI program. Yeah, yeah. It, it, like AI actually looks like a decent CGI AI. His just looks like potatoes. It's like three polygons. It's gross. Do they blast uh, his, uh, May's dad yet or not yet? Uh, Where are we? Close, we're getting there. Close, okay. All right. The guy with the tumor tries to access the AI, but doesn't know the password, so he can't. And um, Mai's boyfriend repeatedly types her name over and over again into the school computer because he's a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, this makes the password screen pop up, even though he's on a school computer, and it don't make any sense. They don't know how computers work; it just don't make any sense. <laughs> and our boy. So from from here to the end of the film, I've wrote seven lines, so I'm, oh I'm a little God, lost. Got, it's fine. Yeah, this... <laughs> so oh goody. So um, <laughs> Tomaro Taguchi then appears, who's been in like every Miike film so far, and um, he rattles some keys in the boy's face, and the dad tells the AI that he wants to have a quiet life with her, assumingly, because I think he wants to fuck his AI daughter, but I could be wrong. Either that or oh, I, I didn't get that vibe at all, bro. That's all yeah, right. He, he's like keeping her a secret AI slave away from everyone else. Like, oh, well, daughter, it's because he's I working just on. installed the bikini mods if you want to try them out. <laughs> well, did he? Did he really install bikini no, mods? No, but that's not what he would do. He's a creeper. Yeah, but he did. You can't just <laughs> lie about people like that. Yo, Jesus! I, I'm not lying. I'm, I'm just making the. Saying that he's making things up about a poor father who just lost his daughter and now he's going well, crazy he and turning her into a vibes. He's making a Lolita AI. He does not. He is. That's why if, if he didn't get shot, this all. is where the film would have gone. It had turned into some weird AI Lolita crap. <laughs> a better film? That would have been sweet. It might be a better film, but it's already fantastic, <laughs> so I can't complain really. <laughs> 
So he <laughs> burns the disc with eyes, memories on. Well, the rest of them. We probably don't want her getting too smart so she can find a way to escape his pervert <coughs> claws or something. And uh, the man in the car who was eavesdropping on the earlier conversation enters the house, and you might recognise him as the father from Young Fug's Nostalgia. I think he's been in a few of them in EKs as well, but I'm not too sure. And the guy asks nice. the dad, and he calls the AI the young lady in the box <laughs> to come with him, and then shoots the dad <laughs> in the back twice. Probably because, yeah. because he wants to rescue the AI daughter, and he's actually uh-huh. the hero. And then she falls into the internet or something? Yeah, she goes into like some weird <laughs> Matrix wormhole, and she becomes even yeah. more real looking. I don't understand why or how, but it's cool, I guess. And she ends up appearing on her boyfriend's computer. Somehow she knew he was there at the school computer. I don't know how. Makes no sense, but it's great. And the boyfriend... Wow, so, okay, hang on. The <laughs> uh, the chick was in a, uh, a a female vocal dance group called Speed. Oh, cool. And at one point, they were the most successful girl group anywhere in Asia, with 20 million singles sold. Yeah, this um, entire film's, like, basically just a vehicle to launch um, idol stars' careers, because there's that boy band in it later on, and they get their own music video. And I'm, yeah. and I guess I, I bet she was in um the all the girls in this group were probably in that um. It's totally uh, Arakaki. Arakaki. <laughs> Arakaki. Yeah, it's a shame they didn't perform a song as well. <clears throat> oh wait, there's that end credit song. They might have sung that one. That was pretty. Mm. I really like the end credit song. I thought it was good. So the boyfriend tells the AI that he kissed Mai under the cherry tree because she didn't remember this for some <clears throat> reason. Maybe it was on the other disc. Hell yeah. And she repeatedly tells him that she is not his dead girlfriend. And I'm guessing maybe the pervert dad installed something that would make her say that. She's like, I'm only my father's daughter. Go away. I'm not your girlfriend. I only see my father as the only man in the world. Something like that. I wish you saw a psychologist so we could talk about why why you think this about I, the father. I just get those <laughs> vibes. It's strong incest AI vibes. You know, like like your fourth section session with the with the psychologist, they be they bring in a teddy bear and they'd be like, "So where did your father touch you? <laughs> where did the AI touch you?" <laughs> <laughs> And the boyfriend goes to Mai's father's house in order to find out what's happening. You think he's going to find the dad's dead body there, but it's not there for some reason. And there's no blood anywhere. And the... I guess they did a good job of cleaning up. Yeah, I don't know why there was no bullet holes, though. The guy's like a real professional. And the AI finds some... <laughs> she finds her email friend on the computer. She just tears down the email window she and appears. <laughs> I don't know how she knew she was in the cafe, but it's cool, I guess. And the driver is back at the evil HQ where he meets the guy with the tumor. And before they're able to shoot each other, Christopher Doyle comes as, out as a hologram. And he's got, like, his speech in English being translated to Japanese. And you cannot understand the word he's saying. It's just awful. <laughs> And Taguchi runs into Brain Tumor Man at the train station and slaps him with some money. And it's not clear why he did that, but it becomes clear later. And the boyfriend is on the bus with the AI, uh, and he's got his little AI girlfriend on the laptop, and some kids come over and think oh, yeah. it's really cool. It's a pretty cool laptop. But it is a really cool like laptop. Heavy. And Especially for 97. Yeah, I didn't even know there were laptops that were that old. I thought <laughs> laptops were like a 2000s thing. Yeah. I'm I'm just out of the loop on old tech, I guess. <laughs> and the uh, I appears on a truck that has a random flat screen on it. Strange. And there's a transition where the kid... Oh, this is fantastic. The transition where the kid transforms into the villain's weird AI guy. It's so weird. Do you remember when this happened? No, I don't remember any part of the rest of this film, really. <laughs> uh, well, the kid's just stood there on the bush, bus and he randomly transformed into to the potato AI person and it cuts to the HQ. It's so weird. Oh, that's weird. It is weird. It, it made me like rewind it because I thought I didn't see it properly, <laughs> but I did. <laughs> the, the next thing I remember is when the thugs chase the dude and then cockroaches chase Mai in cyberspace. Cockroaches? I don't remember any cockroaches. Or wh- well, they were, yeah, you don't oh, remember when, those, um... um... virus things? Yeah, yeah, it's the virus things. Oh, uh, yeah, because they're being, like, chased... So he's being chased by the guy in the suit through the woods and over the rocks, <laughs> and at the same time, she's being chased by CGI virus things that look like weed silverfish. <laughs> I like it, it's cool. 
It was really, yeah. it was really well done. I mean, I like the idea of it for sure, yeah. Yeah. And, and he jumps off a cliff for her? That was sweet. Yeah, it's like Takashi Miike's fugit- fugitive, pretty much. Oh my god, don't don't say things like that. It is! It, it's, <laughs> he's got him, him backed up to a waterfall. Instead of um, Tommy Lee Jones, it's just a bunch of Yakuza's, and he makes him jump off. It's <laughs> awesome. I didn't kill my wife. <laughs> I don't care. I didn't fuck my AI daughter, I swear. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> and, uh, the boyfriend is about to be shot, but yeah, he escapes just by jump- like Harrison Ford jumping off the waterfall. And the boyfriend yeah, like is that. now in a cave, and her eyes are glowing green, and I don't know why, but she tells him for the 50th she's got, time. She's got some virus. Yeah, she probably got infected with some weird virus, and uh, she says for the 50th time that she's not his dead girlfriend, and it's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> And he tells... She's just trying to talk herself out of it, because when she was alive, she was thirsty. So those synopses are growing back. <laughs> she probably wants to break up with him. Like, maybe that's why she wanted to kiss him one last time under the cherry tree, but she couldn't break up with him before she died. Oh, you think? Yeah, that's my yeah. theory, anyway. And the boyfriend once says, like, oh, I want to be with That's you a way now. better theory than the, the, the father fucker thing. Yeah, I don't think uh, I'll be bringing up the father fucking thing anymore, because... I think I've basically <laughs> gone through every possible scenario with that now. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're in a car with that male boy band. and Well, of course it's male boy, but that's what boy bands are. And they're driving yeah. along. Well, nowadays, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they're driving along and the, they lose control of the brakes and he pulls the steering wheel off like the guy in the bird people in China who pulled the steering wheel off in the van. And the stereo lets out hot air, which makes them all hot. <laughs> and then they freeze <laughs> like they're in an igloo. And um, I tells them to jump out. And this is a really, really good scene for a Japanese film, like a stunt scene. They all jump off the cliff with the van. It's like something you'd see in a Hong Kong film. It's really impressive. Like, do they do they take the van by the hand, or do they? What, well, the, what happens? The, they're meant to jump out the van before it goes off the cliff, but they end up jumping out as it goes off the cliff. So they all. Oh jump yeah, off that's the how I would fuck it. it up too. Yeah. yeah, and it's really impressive for a stun. I never want to jump out of a moving car. That seems scary. Oh, yeah, it probably is scary. <laughs> yeah. You probably break your neck. <laughs> and they walk away from the burning cards as it explodes, and that's when we get the awesome dance scene. Oh god, if I broke my neck, who would wipe my butt? No one, you'd be dead. No, you can live with a broken neck, dummy. Who, but who'd want to live with a broken neck, though? You'd probably want to kill yourself. Yeah, but you couldn't, because you're paraplegic. You'd get someone else to kill you. Well, the friend who I had a pact with that we we're going to kill each other if we ever became something like that, <laughs> he's dead. So he, oh, did you he, kill he opted him? out did of luck. Like no, I didn't, I didn't get the chance, no. <laughs> no, that's a shame. So, that would have been, you know, that would have been a good way to go. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> have to find someone else to do that pact with now. Yeah, and I need a new friend to, to kill me now. Like, get whoever's listening to the podcast, write in if you want to be Mike's go-to person to kill. Uh, I, I don't think anybody listening yet. I don't. I don't know. I need a. I got. I got to figure this out. Yeah, some... I'm worried now about breaking my neck. <laughs> well, the clock's ticking. You better act fast and find someone. Dude, right now my neck's kind of feeling stiff. It's like, oh, it's hang on there, started. Nick, relax. You're just going to be what, doing yeah, well. daily chores. It'll just snap one day, and you'll be on the floor <laughs> in a pool of piss and vomit. <laughs> I do have a little st- stenosis of the spine, so... Oh, no. Oh, God. I know. Oh, I'm stretching. It feels so good to stretch. i give you, like, a month Sorry. max before it breaks. Fuck, man. Don't put that shit on me. I don't I don't trust you to come and kill me, so I don't... No, I'm not doing it. Find someone else to break your neck. I mean, yeah. kill you once you break your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I don't want to break All anything. Right. <laughs> so, uh, Rika closes the laptop and tells Mai she's sorry, and then she gives it to the bad guy, and he runs off with Mai. Dude, could you imagine having a girlfriend on a laptop where you could just, like, if you're having an argument, you could just fucking close it? Well, that'd be great. <laughs> just refresh the page or something, and she'd forget. Yeah. <laughs> And the boyfriend tells the tumor guy that Mai is most precious to him and beats the shit out of him and Mai is just screaming on the laptop. And uh, the driver approaches the teen hideout with chains because he's going to like whip him. And uh, <laughs> Rika wanders the streets alone and all sad now. And uh, I and the boyfriend are next to a carousel and there's this cool surreal dream sequence where she becomes real again and he kisses her, which is basically his perverted computer girl fantasy that he's having, but it's cool. 
Mm-hmm. And he tells I that um, he loves her more than anyone else in the entire world, and that causes her to shed a tear and appear even more human. That's lovely. It's very wholesome. And now the boyfriend of the enemy HQ, and they're trapped in some futuristic prison cell. And he, the guy keeps saying, put her in the cockpit, put her in the cockpit of the machine! And eventually puts her in the cockpit, and then... Uh, Christopher Doyle appears on the TV, but the driver guy is like, I don't need you anymore, Christopher Doyle. And he goes into the machine and he fries his brain or something. And I don't, know. I don't remember this happening, but I think this might have been an alternate version I watched, so you might have seen a different version to me. But I remember him going in the machine and then he turned into a massive CGI monster. Did that happen on mm-hmm. yours? Um. As I don't remember. Oh god, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. I, I really didn't like this movie, so it's just I was just, uh, it's just I was faded. <laughs> yeah, I remember turning to like a. I think I might get confused with a lawnmower man, but I remember him being like a massive CGI <laughs> monster. <laughs> yeah. See, now that's a movie with shitty CGI the whole time. I haven't even seen. It. I haven't seen like the CGI moments, but it looks. Oh awesome. really? I think Harrison Ford's also in that, isn't he? No, I don't think so uh but you'd love it because it's yeah, yeah you gotta like watch like it today Tron and that cgi looks amazing uh no it was, uh, you're thinking of pierce brosnan yeah that's what i'm thinking of pierce brosnan yeah yeah i need to check out lawnmower man we'll do um that win wenders film and lawnmower man on, on a podcast uh-huh, together <laughs> yeah it's perfect it's perfect uh double feature lawnmower man and the end yeah. of the world film that's true and films brought up on Takeshi Miike podcast. But, yeah, get uh, Nebraska to make a letterbox list. Films that were mentioned on the podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. good point. I'll give yeah. him something to do. He's not getting any fucking clips out anytime soon. Hey, you fucking relax. That's our fucking. Uh, <laughs> I like to wind him up. Of... I'm not being serious. <laughs> I know we'll be listening, like clenching his fist, like oh fucking bjork. Uh, yeah, that's fair. So. Uh... I think that's all I have for notes on this. Um, other than they go to the cherry tree and they, he basically throws the laptop into the ocean and Mai dies. He kills her again. And yeah, that's all I have really. You I got- want to buy a yerba mate tree. I used to drink yerba mate, but I guess I wouldn't do anything with it because I don't drink caffeine anymore. But still, is, there, is that a coffee coffee tree? No, it's like a it's like a yerba mate is like a Brazilian tea. I don't. Oh right. But it's like, uh, it's kind of cool. Awesome. I guess the cherry tree made me think of it. There's no cherries in cherry trees, right? It just looks No, it's just pink. like cherry yeah. possum. It's those um, pinky white petals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you have mm-hmm. any final thoughts on Andromedia? I really didn't like it. Uh, I don't have any thoughts on it. Um, You know, I don't know. I don't know. Well, all I'll say is it's what about fantastic you? and it's super <laughs> fun. The CGI is great. The plot doesn't make any sense. The computer logic doesn't make any sense, but that's what makes it fun. I mean, the plot boils down to, like, daughter dies, becomes AI, falls in love with boy. Yeah, we overcome our humanity or something. Stuff, like, daughter dies, dad recreates the daughter <laughs> on the computer and falls in love with daughter, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you want to talk about Blues Harp? Because I, my notes are just angry, complaining about it. I mean, you said you knew yeah, why I hated it. Why did you knew that I hated I, it? Because because all the music is really fun it's and joyful. It's terrible. It's absolute garbage music. It's right? No, but blues. it's it's garb. Yeah, because you don't like it because it's fun and upbeat. It's not. I it's really understand. boring and slow, and like, it's just like a guy one centimeter away from a microphone, like. Oh, no, no, no. That's all. It There's is. literally none of that. It is. None it's of that noise. It's, it's crap. It's 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 a wonderful music film with like a lot of upbeat the blues music is and jazz what, stuff. The most reason why I hate it, I just find it so boring. It's like I want to yeah, bash it's, my it's, head in with a rock. It's absolutely fantastic music. Like it's upbeat. All the band plays. There's a lot of. There's so many montages there between the montages. music. Oh, I love the montages. There's so. There's literally like I seven or eight of the them. The montages were edited, but the music ruined it for me. It's just like <laughs> oh, I wanted to put the TV on mute. I had enough by the end. I mean, I, I don't understand how anyone. Like, I understand people who who don't listen to blues or I don't. like in general, they would say, I don't like the blues, but like, I, I don't know why you would say it's terrible. I just like, don't like this... the sound of it. I think it sounds bad. 
Oh, man. It sounds boring, dull, uninspired, that kind of stuff. <laughs> That's like the opposite of how it feels. That's crazy. <laughs> so, okay, okay, the English don't like blues. Well, so I, I'm we'll not speaking for everyone on this island. It's just me that doesn't no, no. like no, it. No, 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 no. You, every time, every opinion you give is the, the opinion of the British people behind it. All British so. people love Andromedia. It's a fact. <laughs> Oh, okay, maybe not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it starts with, like, this dude as a kid, and he's playing a little harmonica. Yeah, fuck and him. It has... I hate the harmonica. <laughs> it's the world's worst instrument. It sounds like eerie. Uh, although I agree with that, it, it plays beautifully here. You know, another name for the harmonica is obviously the harp, the blues harp. I did not so know that. So it's this that. kid playing harmonica. Oh, <laughs> okay. Guess the name now you do. Now, now. <laughs> now it makes sense. It's called blues harp. Yeah, well... Um, <laughs> Uh, so and like his mom is like this hot barefoot chick, and so I'm all, I'm immediately like <laughs> hell yeah. Yeah, she's like um, a prostitute. But it, it, yeah, his mom is a prostitute. Yeah. Um, and he, clearly, like he sees a bunch of men going through the house all the time mm -hmm. and sad about it. She does look like the bitch from Squid Games. Oh, I, I don't know if you watch Squid I Games. I haven't seen Squid Game yet. I'm still watching Seinfeld. What? Oh, yeah, you don't like Korea as much as you love Japan. I like Korea a lot, but I haven't seen too much Korea stuff is it. your number two oriental favorite. No, no, number my number two favorite is China, then Korea. That's my third favorite. You mean Hong Kong? Yeah, it's the same or thing. China. China, Hong Kong. Friend. Listen, Mike, well, if I'm going to say China, then I'm obviously referring to both China and Hong Kong. I know that mainland China is a separate entity from Hong Kong, but I just say China because it saves me saying Hong Kong. Uh, I feel like they're so different. You, you'd have they to are break different. Them up well, not anymore because Hong Kong's now communist as well. Yeah. It's very it's sad. sad. It's Hong Kong cinema sad is dead. It's awful. Yeah, hopefully, though. Ugh. We should invade just so we can get Hong Kong cinema back on track. <laughs> I don't think we'd be able to overpower the Chinese communist government. And then on top of that, we'll have like some cool new nuclear shit to talk about because we'll all be dropping bombs. Well, because so be well Hong Kong's now China, we're going to nuke China. <laughs> yes. What? I think it's fair. No. There's still hey, some Communism. decent stuff coming out of mainland. It's just nowhere near as good as Hong Kong. Mm, we'll see. So the uh, we find the the little boy is walking away mm -hmm. and he's like towards the sun and then there's a rock show <laughs> which is fantastic. Yeah. And obviously, oh, the, the opening the opening credits are a montage with the concert, which obviously is fantastic. Yeah. Also, they play uh, they play Tekken, which is my favorite fighting oh, video yeah, game. Tekken's great, especially the PS1 yeah. one. At first, I thought it was it was Street Fighter. And I'm like, oh wait, that's Tekken. Yeah, I think they're playing Tekken. And I got three. super excited. Uh huh. And then there's also this like chase scene with uh, we don't know who yet, but it's like this yakuza yeah, dude. Kenji. He's running, yeah, he's running away from other yakuza dudes. Yes. Um, he's edited I don't anyone. know anyone's name in this movie except Chuchi because I like his name and they say it a lot. Yeah, he's the um, bad guy from the first Ip Man film. Before, oh really? But, yeah, linking it back to Hong Kong films, he's the bad guy from. Nice. That. Yeah. Very cool. So we get a great opening montage. Um, Oh, uh, why don't you find yourself a bitch so she can suck your dick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's talking to those uh, fat American guys. Who's causing a scene. Yeah. Um, he's a, yeah, Chuchi, our, uh, our little harmonica player, is now like this cool dude who hangs out at a bar and bartends. Yeah. And wears a red shirt. Like, that's his favorite thing in the world. Yeah, he's got style. He's got one red shirt the way I have a million Hawaiian shirts. He's like Bart oh, dude, Simpson. I took it. A... Oh, you're right, yeah. Dude, I got all my shit out of storage, and there was one box that was just called Hawaiian shirts. Oh my god! So now, <laughs> I have like I have, I have eighteen more Hawaiian shirts now. That's amazing. Just get like yeah. I can't do math. Get twelve or thirteen more, and you'll have enough for every day of a month. Oh, I do. I I no. Well, now I have like I I got eighteen more, so I have like thirty, thirty-five. That's fantastic. You remind me of um, yeah. This guy who was on a TV show, I think it was Beauty and the Geek, where they pick really nerdy guys to go out with hot girls, and he had a Hawaiian <laughs> shirt collection, and it was quite impressive. Nice. I, guess, I, I bet that guy got laid. He probably did. <laughs> they all have makeovers at the end of the show. My my favorite my favorite way to like if I have to go somewhere in the morning or something is wearing flip flops, basketball shorts, and a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> it's it's my favorite go to. It's the Florida dad look. Nox. Is it? No. That's why I, I think never of when I it, think of older Floridian people, Hawaiian shirts, flip flops, probably sunglasses. Yeah, but they, it's usually car it's usually cargo shorts though that they wear. 
I do not know the difference. Which I'm... Uh, oh, car, okay, so basketball shorts is like, you know, like they play basketball in. I don't know how to describe it. Just oh, like Google gym, basketball like looking gym men. Gym shorts. Gym shorts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gym, shiny gym shorts. Yeah. Those are my. That's my favorite. Type. Cargo shorts are like these long shorts that have a million pockets and shit like that. So. Oh, we we just call them shorts. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's different kinds of shorts. Uh. So the harmonica boy who is now a bartender. His name is Chuchi. Yeah. Chuchi, which is favorite. Uh, he, he goes out to have a smoke and he, uh, he helps the guy that was, that's bleeding from the chase earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, cause he's, he ran away and then like the people that were chasing him are, um, are like known to Chuchi cause he buys like Coke from them and sells Coke. Yeah. And like, I love how he tries to sell Coke to people. Like he walks up to him in a street, in a, like a crowded, like downtown area and like kind of gets in their face. Like he's going to punch them. Mm-hmm. And if they want drugs, they get in his face, and then they go in the corner and sell drugs to each other. <laughs> but, like, otherwise, it's just people look at him like, why are you getting into my face? Yeah, it's cool. Oh, that's so great. Everything about him I is love cool, drug dealers. through his music days. Yeah. yeah. You ever do coke? No, I've never done coke. Have you? All right, you should do it. I think you'd like it. I don't think I would. No. <laughs> No, my poor heart wouldn't be able to take it. I mean, I mean if I can't drink caffeine, I can't imagine yeah, what explode. cocaine would do to me. You wouldn't break um, your neck, you'd just, your heart would just explode. Yeah. You, you need so a the... guy for that instead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, I think if my heart explodes, I'm just dead. So I, I don't need a guy. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> um, uh, so the chick that Ch- uh, Chuchi helped earlier, what's her name? Um, I just called her Vet Woman. That's fine. I never know anyone's. Well, yeah. So she 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 stitches up the dude, the yakuza he helped. Yeah. And um and like at the, like right before she starts sticking the needles in him, she's like, "Ha ha, it's okay. I don't have qualifications." <laughs> yeah, she's like, "Human skin's a lot <laughs> so thinner than fantastic. cat and dog skin." And she, I think she's <laughs> yeah, thicker. Right Is it thicker or thinner? Uh, I think it's thinner. Dark yeah, she does. Thicker. And, uh, I love the quotes in this movie because somebody says nobody ever really loves a whore, which is a great <laughs> quote, although untrue. I think I was just watching TikTok many while the film wonderful was on people. for the most part, so I wasn't really paying attention. You fucking woman! <laughs> At least I watched my movie. What the fuck's your problem? I watched like except most for the of it, fifteen minutes like the I walked out. Half an hour, I hated it so much I couldn't be bothered watching it. It just spawned out my mind. Fucking TikTok. <laughs> it was more entertaining All than right. this crap. So there's more. There's <laughs> You're in... Oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> so, but anyway, getting back to the second best Miki we watched so far. Ugh. Uh, there's a ton more singing montages. Yep. Hey, man, I fucking kept up the energy on your shitty movie. <laughs> Get out your ass. <laughs> I'm keeping I need up help the here. energy. I just I'm fucking drowning. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, the music right, in Blue's so, House um... really good. I, I've actually ordered the album. It's such a good music. Hey, I don't, I don't have to, hey, you don't have to lie, I'm just saying. <laughs> Get your energy up. I'll try, I'll try. Um, so then they, then, <laughs> just do a coffee enema. That that usually hits quicker. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, so then they, uh, they like, they team up, I guess, now, and they beat up some, well, actually, they, well, they go their separate ways, but they, they become, he's friends with the Yakuza now. Yeah, that Yakuza uh, Even though he's the gay, rival yeah. Yakuza of the Yakuza he sells drugs from, so. Yeah. The it's all like a mishmash. Kenji's gay, and he basically wants to get And then they beat him. up some... Did you not Who? pick up on that? Kenji, the Yakuza, he's gay? Are you talking about the fat guy? No, not the fat You're guy. You're talking about the, the fat guy. The second main character, the Yakuza, he's gay. He's not gay. He is, he's absolutely gay. His, his... his... No, his fat um, bodyguard guy is gay and wants to get with him. Yeah, he's also gay. What makes you say he's gay? All right, there's a scene where Kenji stares at naked Chuji on the bed for, like, five minutes. Well, it's not five minutes, but it's, like, one minute. He just stares at him naked on the bed. And there's that other scene. Well, to be fair, he looks he looks amazing. Well, yeah, but there's this other scene as well where... I stared! <laughs> we all stared, but he's explicit, explicitly gay. It's like, well, it's subtle, but you okay. can tell. And there's this other scene where... They're in that parking lot area, and the fat Yakuza guy's with them, and the Yakuza says to Chuji, I... I like you. And Chuji says back, Haha, yeah, I like you too. And then the Yakuza whispers to himself, 
talking about no. the fat guy, right? No, I'm talking about the main Yakuza. He, the main no, Yakuza okay. says to Chuji, okay, I like ahead. you. And Chuji says back, ha ha, I like you too. Then the main Yakuza guy looks down at the ground while walking away. And he's like, no, you don't understand. I like you. Hmm. He's gay. I feel like we should take a time out and look at the, uh, look at the book. <laughs> to get to get to get to get to get to know how gay because I I just thought the big fat guy was gay. I think he so. was also gay. You can go grab the book huh. now if you want and take a look. Yeah, fuck it, fuck it. Let's 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 do a little reading. Yeah, this mo- this movie is going uh or this podcast going way uh way faster than I thought for yeah, two we're already movies. At Fifty minutes. What the fuck's going on? The time yeah, just it's weird. sped up. It's weird. Oh, you, you, I can hear you with your book All now. Right. I'm not sure which chapter it is. Just like, <laughs> flip through and hope to find it. Oh no, I see, I see it here, but it's just like, like how, like there's so many pages for Blue's Harp because it's such a great movie. Yeah, it's just like kind of why. Tom has to talk about find if he's how gay. gay it is for like four pages. He'll talk about it. I'm sure. <laughs> he might knowing Tom Mez. Oh wait, no, he can't. Be, wait, hang. On. Uh, hang on. So the big one of the big plot lines is that this Kenji starts is fucking the boss's mistress. Yeah, and he's fucking great. So uh, yeah, why but would he he's be gay? doing it because he he's he's trying to be a manly yakuza. He's not accepting his sexuality. He's trying to be like the basic straight yakuza. But he is gay. Hmm. I'm sh- I'm positive. Oh wow. Okay. What does Tom? Okay. Say? Well, I'm wrong. Oh, does... Kenji is uh is the fact that Kenji is a closet homosexual. Yeah. Yeah, see, Tom Mez picked right, up yeah. it as well. See, I don't know. Okay, I, I agree. I'm, I'm wrong. But I will say that it's, it, he just seems like a great friend. Yeah, you could read it as that <laughs> as well. I, I don't think it matters which way you read it, really. I, I, you, no, no. I, I, well, no, it, it gives it it gives it a better light, a more interesting light, if you, yeah. you kind of see that he's clearly up for him. Because <laughs> now all these little, like... Now there's like all these little touches where he's just like instead of treating him like a little brother or like a friend, yeah. he like it's clear he just wants to bang his asshole, and that's cool yeah, too. You'll have to rewatch Blues House. Well, that... You'll see it in a whole new light. Like, Dude, I'm a hundred percent rewatching this because <laughs> I, I love I love like I might even tell TJ he should watch it with I think me Blue because J- he likes I, blues. I, I was called him Blue Jay. I think <laughs> TJ <laughs> would like it because TJ likes blues, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I love it. Um, but yeah, so when I was first watching this, I thought, I'm glad, I'm glad we got the book. That was good. Yeah. Um. If only we prepped Yeah, the I, I picked up on the dude that, like, his, his fat, his fat, his fat, um, bodyguard guy was clearly gay for Kenji. Yeah. So. I, I, I think, I, I couldn't tell if he was, like, loyal or actually gay, but I think he probably was gay as yeah. well. But Kenji well, I thought he was, I knew he was, I knew he was when, like, they were in the uh, sauna together. Oh, and then yeah. the fat guy got, like, really close to him. <laughs> I was like, bro. You need a massage, Give Kenji? him some space. <laughs> <laughs> um so then kenji fucks up the, some dude on speed because like you're not supposed to sell speed or oh, something because yeah. it's too like, bad for as a drug yeah. and then his own yakuza beat the shit out of him because yeah. he didn't have the authority to like i guess to, to beat up the guy selling speed so yeah like, it all comes full circle for us kenji and they kick him down <laughs> um yeah, Chuji goes selling fucking coke again creepily. I, I just I love those scenes. There's like two or three scenes of him selling coke. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> um, so the dude that you know got fu- that fucked up Kenji got fucking shanked, right? That was him. Yeah. yeah. That was he's, he went to take. I love the uh, he's Mike's done this a few times where like a character goes to pee and then a bunch of dudes come out of the shadows and just oh, fucking start stabbing him with machetes. Time, that's <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, they they we find out they get rid of all the dead bodies by stuffing them in oil barrels and then just standing uh, stuffing them with concrete. Yeah, they just and then throw I guess just the putting ocean. them. And they throw them in like a fairly small body of water, like yeah, uh, unless right they go to the, the ocean or something. But <laughs> yeah, 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 it's maybe. just like kind of like that's that's gonna they're gonna find that. So yeah. uh, and then I realized it was uh it was it was Tekken not Street Fighter because Law wins. Was yeah. uh, on the screen. That's who and Law is a, a, a he's like the character. Best character. Oh, I always played as Eddie Gordo. I was one of those people. Oh, uh, is which one's he? Uh, the black guy who does um spur- spinny stuff. Oh, he's I thought Brazil. that was Law. Oh, I'm getting confused. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. No, Law is um. I think he's actually the cop who's like just shirtless all the time. Oh right, I see. 
So he takes the uh, he takes the chick, uh, the vet to, uh, to on a date where they go see airplanes take off. Oh, which my is dad took adorable. me to see airplanes uh, take off when I was a kid. It was so boring. <laughs> oh, so now I see he took your dad took you on a date. So that's where you got the thing from <laughs> no! the first movie. No, you... <laughs> no. Don't listen to All what right, this right. man's saying. Didn't take He's them, clearly dude. insane. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and they did the thing. I don't know, like they don't. I don't see them anywhere anymore. But like the things where you put in a quarter and you can see far away. With the big oh, the yeah, binoculars. The binoculars things. I think they're really on the uh, top of the Empire State Building now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. Oh, no other place. Yeah, no other place in the entire it. world. It's just up there. Um. So our Yakuza Genji, our closet homosexual. Yeah. He um. He bangs away his uh, his boss's mistress, and she has a very long, beautiful foot. Oh, oh my I goodness! I notice. actually went back and watched it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, it was nice. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, and uh, so Genji is uh, forging a will to be named a successor of his own yakuza. Oh yeah. Which is kind of weird because his boss doesn't really seem to like him, and uh, he doesn't really seem to be that high above in the organization. Yeah, I think so he I just really wants to see rise how, like, to the top. That's his goal. Yeah, but, like, I think they'd be suspicious of it. They'd be like, ah, uh, why would he pick you? They probably would. I, um, I, I, that and... might be why he got shot at the end. I have no idea why he got shot, because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why, so. Ah, good. It's nice that the, our, both our guys, Chuji and Kenji, get laid at the same time. So that was cool. Yeah, it's magical. Um, it's crazy how, yeah, very magical. <laughs> oh, I, I learned that Nan, that Nani means what? But yeah, Nani, Nani means, means what? what's up. <laughs> I mean, I always knew Nani means what, but I didn't know Nani means what's up. Yeah, I think depending oh, on the tone, it means end... different things. Like Nanda means uh, yeah. what, I think, as well. Nanda means what? Yeah, I think Nanda also means what. Or it means ah, why. okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's a weird language. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the band's playing, and Chuchi is, you know, he's a bartender. Yeah. But he gets, uh, he gets selected to be on stage. Oh, yeah. Um, and you know he... You know he fucked that girl good because she will not stop clapping for him. <laughs> so she's like all about supporting, he, support, excuse me, supporting him now. Yeah, she looks. And uh, awesome. although you, although you disagree, Chuji's fucking great, and he brings down the house. So yeah, they I have a great little scene there. Just painful, painful harmony. <laughs> oh, th okay. This is this is where I write. I totally get why you hate this. It's really fun and joyful. <laughs> <laughs> is it? <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah, that's that's totally like it, it. It clicked in my head like when when he got on stage. I was like, oh, this is so happy for, and everyone's having a good time. People and shouldn't of course, be Gert happy in it. films. They should be sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so Chuchi gets the band because like the lead singer's dad had a stroke. Yeah. And so he told him he'd go take over his tofu business, which is <laughs> fucking hilarious. Um, could you get a little closer to the mic again? I'm, I don't know if you're fading away a little bit. My lips are, like, touching the microphone. Really? Oh, okay, that's fine then. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, I, uh, uh, they do the thing where they go on a date, and they take a little Polaroids and shit like that. Oh, yeah, that was a cute And I think that's touch. adorable. Yeah. Yeah, because I used, to, I used to do that with, like, the little Kodak 24-hour cameras. Oh, cool. <laughs> so those are always those kind of reminded me of that, yeah. Awesome. Um, our dude Kenji loves brushing his teeth. Probably, he I guess does. now because he's, he's trying gay to and brush he's like, the gay away. That's what and he's so doing. he's trying to get. He is. I, I like totally different viewpoint of why he's brushing his teeth now. So. Yeah. Huh. Oh, I, or I guess he brushes his teeth and scrubs himself down after like he has sex with the yeah, woman he that every time. So I. Taste out of his mouth. Yeah, that's right. He <laughs> he's just like he hates it. That makes way more sense now. Yeah. Man, I wish I had read the book. Like, Kenji, what I'm gonna do from now on, I think, is watch. <laughs> is yeah, because you're also a closet homosexual. No, I so. just think it tastes right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's something a closet homosexual would say. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch like half an hour of the movie and then just read Tom Mez's book. Yeah. And then just go back to watching the movie. That's so I think that, may, that makes it better. We need to remember to start reading yeah, the book before we watch stuff. Um, we always forget. That. Like, yeah, I, 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 I was gonna watch it, but then. Of China. Oh yeah, no, I I did for that because I liked it, but oh, right. I, I, there wasn't any like notes, I guess. Damn you, Tom. Um, yeah, I'm gonna read him. I'm gonna read him before the next episode, and you know, if there's anything to talk about, I'll kind of bring him up. So. Awesome. We need trivia. Um. 
Yeah, I like when you bring trivia. Yeah, I need to start. Doing All right, so that. then like the 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 plot, the Yakuza plot unfolds where like what's his name Kenji? Yeah, Kenji. I, don't know, I forgot already. Kenji is tall as the other Yakuza head. That was the guy, or not the head, but like you know, a, an underling. Yeah. That he's gonna kill his own yakuza, and then he's gonna kill his yakuza, as a, as revenge, and then he's gonna become the leader. And this is the yakuza that's selling drugs to Chuchi, so like yeah. it's all it's all related. Yeah. Um, I, I guess without the music, would you have liked this movie more? Like if if the uh, if the, no, it was replaced really don't with something think else? I would have liked it anymore. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I, I I think the music definitely makes it worse, but the story and characters aren't anything special or memorable. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, I just don't like uh, what about they, they eat chocolate together? That's pretty memorable. I don't remember. This. I like that scene. That they sit on the pier and they talk. They talk the plot over, and then the other yakuza, who's not Kenji, takes out his chocolate. And then Kenji looks at him. He's like, "Are you? What are you doing? <laughs> you know, instead of having a cigarette or something, he's like, I'm, ch- I'm eating chocolate. It's healthy for my heart or something.' <laughs> and he's like, "Do you want one?" Then his heart explodes. And so Kenji's like, "Kenji's like, okay." And so he takes one. So that's why I thought that their plan was so good because I thought they were gonna bond together after all over the chocolate. So, <laughs> what did he tell um, the um, girl? The vet tell him that she's pregnant. Um, in a little bit. Ah, okay. Yeah, um, uh, our Yakuza goes to see Chuchi play. Now I know it's because he has a crush on him, but I just mm-hmm. thought it was a lovely gesture. Otherwise, oh, he's like, Tell I mean, Kenji I guess you can, you can, awesome, and then he smiles and just. Yeah, I guess him. you can, yeah, you can have, you can have a gay, gay crush on your bro and still be all about your bro, you know. Yeah. So it's all good. Uh, why is Chuji sleeping in the sleep? Why is Chuji sleeping in the, on the street? Sleep? Oh, on the street. <laughs> on the street. Uh, yeah, I think he just passed out drunk after the performance. I don't think he's home. Okay, yeah. Was, yeah, well, there, like, so he passed out where there's this, like, black homeless dude hanging out there. That's his dad. Except the black homeless guy. Was... Oh, was that his dad? Yeah. I thought that was, like, see, I thought that was, like, someone that he pretended was his dad to make himself feel better. And ah, so he just kind of took I'm over. Sure. It's like, is he gay or not gay kind of thing. It's your own interpretation. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, because obviously he's clearly, like, biracial in some way yeah um, that's what fits into i just thought he, yeah. he's a rootless individual theme he's an outcast for sure yeah yeah he totally looks like the dude i would like go to high school with except if, if they were like white or black or something because there weren't that many asians or japanese people oh, so. yeah, i get what you mean he, yeah uh, oh yeah now he's gonna be a daddy so when when, yeah. when she wakes him up in the streets he's like i'm i'm pregnant and he's like so is it <laughs> he's like what do you mean so <laughs> no yeah is it mine uh uh, so Chuchi is gonna get scouted by a record label. Um, oh God, I don't know why. And this is when I uh, this is when I write that the fat guy is acting squirrely, which I just mean gay, I guess. <laughs> he's acting weird towards uh towards Genji. He just keeps taking out chocolate. Um, <laughs> uh, so then the other yakuza meets with Chuchi, and he's just like, "Hey, you gotta kill someone for me." Mm-hmm. And Chuchi's stupid, and he says, "Okay." Yeah. Um. Oh, and then the, so the uh, you know the the mistress of the boss is gonna do the whole will switcheroo, yeah. but I think like the clock chimes and like she gets all nervous and she, I think she fucks up which 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 uh which will is which right? I don't know if no, you know sure. that or not. I was on TikTok. Um. Okay. So what's with all the vaginal bleeding? Eh? Huh? What vaginal bleeding? There's a. Uh, there is a lot of vaginal bleeding from the mistress, oh. and at the end. He um the boss says that like women's vaginas bleed. That's how come I. That's why she told me about the affair, and I was just like, what? what? Oh, I think it was because he yes. fucked her really aggressively. Because he was like, I'm not gay. I'm straight. I'm not gay. That kind of thing. And he was fucking her really hard, and she was like screaming oh. in pain. Oh, and that's how that's how the boss found out that yeah, his mistress I think he was cheating on him too hard. Yeah. Wow, this fucking dick, his gay dick, really fucked him up at the end there. Yeah, the gay seed um, stabbed her. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh yeah, then the fat guy starts apologizing a lot. His bodyguard and uh, yeah, Kenji slaps him. I don't know, like, yeah, he sold Chuchi out to the other yakuza, but like, I it never, I didn't make it clear like why or how he was part of it. Because the fat guy has a crush on the other yakuza guy, and you don't want him getting with Chuji. Oh. Fuck, you're a genius, Bjork. Yeah, maybe you are uh, a fucking some gay of that genius. chocolate was poison or something. He tried poisoning it. 
<laughs> so we learned that our boys were backstabbed by the uh, boss Yakuza. Yeah. And they're about to be killed, but fucking Kenji, like, John woos the shit <laughs> and, like, jumps backward with, like, two guns coming out oh, of his that sleeves. That was awesome. And he just fucking kills. Yeah, he kills the boss. He kills a few other people. And then uh, they, 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 they run away. So Chuchi can get his uh his rock band on in front of the uh the scout. Yeah. And he plays with a gunshot wound, and then like some uh some yakuza come and kill the other the uh kill Genji. Yeah. But they don't seem to kill the guy the uh, uh, Chuchi. I think they, they they don't kill him at the end, right? He gets to play. No, his... he got uh, to live. Yeah. And but the other yakuza yeah. they might care that he's gonna die. I think he's like smiling yeah. when they shoot him in the head. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's Blues Harp. It sure is. And uh, it sure is. I think How did we go an hour on Bird People and an hour on these two films? That's wild. I don't know. It's really strange. I think it's because we took a little while to look through the book. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> well, no, I thought this would take longer. No, it didn't. So, any yeah. uh, any any final thoughts? What's happening next? Are you watching that fucking um, TV show that's six hours long? Uh, no, that's not next. I think next we're doing ley okay. lines. Then we're doing the TV show in silver. Then I think we're doing audition. So hang on, we're doing ley lines by itself. Yeah. And that's the one on the Blu-ray, right? I have yeah, that that's on the disc, maybe? third film on the Blu-ray. Then, yeah. then after that, we're doing the TV show with silver. Then I think it's audition. That's I think what the plan is. Right on. Yeah. All right, so uh, we'll do ley lines again sometime soon. Yeah, sure. Like next week. How about Wednesday? What day is it today? Sunday. Uh, maybe. <laughs> we'll text about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Say good night. Good night. Good Good night.